guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. Today's video, I wanted to do a quick haul slash talk, I, I, yeah, I guess talk about um, some Christian fiction novels because I was one of those people back in the day that just steered clear from fiction novels because the Christian fiction novels that I heard about were all like Amish based or they were kind of like the ones that take place in like the 18, 1700s where you have a 12 year old marrying this old like this older guy and it kind of turned me off for the longest and I remember I posted about that I think on my Instagram and um, I think here on YouTube as well and many people gave me like some suggestions and I found some Facebook groups and stuff like that so I decided to take a dive into some Christian fiction novels and I have some to share with you guys now I have a lot more on ebook um, just because I'm an ebook reader I love ebooks I don't even know what my e-reader is oh here it is so I have a lot more on my e-reader but um, I'm not going to go through them because there's so many. But I know that there is Kim Cash Tate, who I love. I talk about her all the time. She writes um, Christian fiction novels. She also writes Christian nonfiction. So definitely check out her books. But I am going to discuss the books that I have physically here for you guys. So I have five, which I have read already, and then four that were sent for review that I haven't read, but I'm going to predict them to be four or five star reads. So. The first one I want to talk about actually recently came out. You guys probably saw me talking about this all over my Instagram because this book actually amazed me. And it's called Mark of the Raven by Morgan L. Bus or Busset. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm sorry for butchering your last name. But um, this is the first book in the Ravenwood saga. And this is considered a Christian fantasy. At first, I thought it was a YA Christian fantasy because it kind of reads like a YA. But this is definitely adult because I believe the characters are in their 20s. So just want to say that and this actually shocked me so I'm not gonna lie when I got the email about being able to request this book and saw the synopsis about it I was definitely intrigued because I'm really into fantasy novels I like fantasy novels I like paranormal novels that's just what I enjoy reading um fictional wise but to find a Christian fantasy I thought was a little weird um, because I felt like it was going to be one of those books that kind of like pushes God in your face. And though I do like my nonfiction books to be like God, God, Jesus, Jesus with scriptures. When it comes to my fantasy novels, not so much. So um, I was really shocked with how amazing this book was. I gave this book a five stars. I literally finished this at 11.40 p.m. on the 5th and this book came out Tuesday, November 6th. <sighs> This book was everything, you guys. So basically, a brief synopsis is that this book follows a young lady named Lady Celine, who is the heir to the House of Ravenwood. She is now at the age where she can obtain her power, and the power that she has, or rather the ability that she has, is kept a secret from a lot of the other houses. There, I believe, are like five, or there are six other houses, plus lesser houses, um, but there are six great houses, if I'm not mistaken. And each house has their own type of ability. So there's water, there's earth, fire, light. Um, and her family, the Ravenwood family, has the power or the ability of dream walking. Now, a lot of people thought that this was extinct because something happened with her house back in the day. But um, the woman in her family kept it a secret. So she now comes into her power and she was scared. Um, her power is amazing, but her family, because they're so bitter, they use their power for evil. And it's basically Lady Celine trying to figure out how to please her family but live her life without having to hurt or kill other people. And it ripped my heart apart. It was so amazing. I loved it so much. This is a dual perspective book. It does follow a guy named Grand Lord Damien who I believe is 24 if I'm not mistaken. And um, he's basically dealing with the same thing. How to use his powers to protect without hurting people because in this book it's pretty hard to use your power to protect without killing so watching the two of them um, just mature in their powers and to grow and see how they kind of think alike was amazing this actually reminded me of another book duology that I recently read by Lonnie Taylor which is called Strange the Dreamer they both reminded me of the characters um, Sarai definitely uh, Lady Celine definitely reminded me of Sarai you probably don't know what I'm talking about if you don't read like fictional novels but the duology that I'm referring to is called Strange the Dreamer by Lonnie Taylor great read um, but yeah I really loved it the fantasy was amazing the world building was amazing the magic system was amazing but what I really loved the most was the references to scripture without there being scripture so one that was like immediate to me and I need to find it 
question is can I find it I'm gonna look for it so give me a second guys while I look for this because I thought it was funny okay so here it is so there's a part in this book where hopefully I'm in frame I hope you guys can like see me it's not too blurry I can't tell because I don't got my glasses on but yeah um, so there's a part where it says that maybe Celine had been born for such a time as this to save House Ravenwood. And I put LOL Queen Esther reference. Um, because that's the one, you know, scripture that I immediately remember. And if you guys don't know, we did study Queen Esther here on this channel. Um, and we talked about how Queen Esther saved her people. And Mordecai said this specific thing to her that maybe she was born for such a time as this to save the Jews. So I thought it was like actually funny that it was written in this book um there are other references to scriptures i've read a lot of other reviews where they pulled out scriptures from like matthew and luke which is phenomenal i'm going to go back and read those um and try to like plug them in but this is definitely one of those books that talks about scripture without putting scripture in your face i really enjoyed this, this was a five star i can't wait for the second book the sequel is called flight of the raven so i'm super duper excited for that so excited the next two books that i have are from tessa afshar and i love her writing her writing is phenomenal and keep in mind the next four books that i'm going to show you guys i read on ebook on my phone i have like so many apps on my phone to read books i read these using an app called what is the app called it's called moon plus reader pro i basically downloaded the ebooks for these four books and read them on my cell phone because i just was not in the mood to mess with my nook at the time i guess but um yeah so the first one is called in the fields of grace and it's by tessa Afshar, like i said and this is a biblical historical fiction so this book follows the story of ruth and boaz and you guys know about ruth and boaz we study ruth and boaz and we dive deep into it but this brings to life their romance and it really just pulls at the heartstrings i really love this one so much so on the back it says love resurrected from lifeless dreams happens in the arms of a loving god so basically in this book boaz loses his wife and his kids i think he had a son previously that they lost a daughter they previously lost and then a son that she died giving birth to so boaz had his own problems to deal with and then we have ruth obviously who is not of the jews so yeah she's not hebrew um so you know it's kind of like her journey moving with naomi back to israel and then the two of them trying to figure out their life and then Ruth meeting Boaz and Boaz having feelings for Ruth but not being sure if he wants to you know move on them and Naomi being a matchmaker between the two of them and just it is so good it is so amazing I loved all the characters outside of Ruth Boaz and Naomi of course and if you're looking for a book that will bring that story to life the story of Ruth just please grab this it's such a beautiful beautiful story the next one from Tessa Afshar which I loved way more than the one in the field of grace is Pearl in the Sand and this one is the story of Rahab and Salom I think that's his name Salom or Salam um this you can find in the book of Joshua and it ripped me to pieces basically if you don't, guys don't know Rahab was a prostitute and this talks about her being a prostitute and then leaving her people to be one of the Israelites or the Hebrews Hebrews Israelites yeah you guys know what I mean <laughs> um but yeah and how she saved um the two people that came to Jericho um and how they saved her as well if you guys know the story basically she saved two of the Hebrews right she saved two of the Hebrews um and then she asked them to save her once they came to take Jericho, which they did. And this brings it to life. It really is amazing. It is heart gripping, wrenching. It basically kind of gives you um, a, bef a before story of how she became a prostitute. And then the after story of her joining the people of Israel and marrying into the Israelites. And trying to come to terms with her past and how her beauty is... Um, how she feels tainted by her beauty considering that she was a prostitute and her dealing with that it was really beautiful it was heart-wrenching it was gripping i loved it i just i can't wait to reread this this is my baby like if i had to pick one or the other from in the field of grace or this one pearl in the sand is it for me because the symbolism in this the scriptures in this it just if you're dealing with a lot um as far as like dealing with how beautiful you feel or how beautiful you are or if you've been sexually abused or if you've done things that you're not proud of sexually this book will remind you that god loves you despite all of that it will remind you that you are still beautiful no matter how people look at you no matter if people think you are tainted or you know whatever it, it it just pulled at my heartstrings. I loved it. The next book is by Masu Andrews, and I'm actually a fan of her writing. She has a new book coming out called A Fire in Lions next year. I got a sneak peek of that. 
I'm hoping to be a part of the launch team for that book because the first two chapters were life. And that one is based off of Daniel um, and his wife. So, but yeah, this one is called Isaiah's Daughter. It's the first book in the Prophets and the Kings. And it was amazing. 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 So basically this follows Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, and what it would have been like if he had a daughter. And, um... It was just, it, it was beautiful. Like, there's just nothing else I can say. I'll read the back. It says, whips cracked, soldiers shouted, my feet blistered in a sun-baked wilderness. We kept walking, walking, walking. The Hebrews are divided a nation, are a divided nation. Israel in the north, ten tribes strong, has vowed to pagan worship. And Judah's two tribes, an evil king mocks King David's legacy, while a remnant of Yahweh's faithful cling desperately to their one true God. Ishma enters the prophet Isaiah's home as a household servant, but her quick mind and lively spirit gain the friendship of Prince Hezekiah. When Isaiah sees their relationship mature, he adopts Ishma, giving her a royal pedigree and a new name. Ishma becomes Heb Heb I can't pronounce it. It'll be on the screen. Um, which basically means the light of the Lord and the desolate captive becomes Judah's queen. So this one talks about king hezekiah and the prophet isaiah and the wife that was mentioned in the um book of isaiah and it's so good it's so good it's it's so good you guys like when i say it's so good it's amazing and it does include scriptures like at the beginning of each chapter that basically gives you kind of like um biblical background off that chapter which is so amazing i loved it so much it was so good <sighs> i really love hezekiah like this book made me love king hezekiah so much more like I knew Hezekiah was like a king at a young age, but I didn't know much about him because I didn't really study like the chronicles. I haven't studied chronicles or Samuels or any of the kings yet. I plan to. But reading this made me so excited to read um, and study about King Hezekiah and just... <sighs> I loved it. And then the references to Isaiah, like when he had a lot of his um, visions and stuff like that that are written in the book of Isaiah. Hands down, so beautiful. Just read it. The next book and the last one that I read, which is literally like, it's up there with Pearl in the Sand. I think I probably love this one more than Pearl in the Sand. I'm not sure. But um, this is by Francine Rivers and it's Redeeming Love. Um, this is the 20th anniversary edition. I did get all four of these books off of Amazon just because Barnes & Noble wants too much money. So yeah, Amazon was the way and I had prime shipping. Yeah. But um, yeah, this was one of the books that so many people raved about to me when I asked about Christian fiction novels. This was one of them. Everyone kept saying Angela Hunt as an author. I mean, I did read one of her books, but I gave it a four stars. And a lot of people were telling me to read Francine Rivers. So I decided to give it a go, and I am so happy I did. This is basically an historical fiction novel based off of the story of the prophet Hosea and his wife, Gomer. Basically, the character's name is Michael Hosea. And the person who plays Gomer is Angel, and Angel is a prostitute. And if you guys don't know, in the story of Hosea, um, God tells Hosea to marry the prostitute Gomer. And this one basically brings to life their story and how she continues to run away from him and she can't accept the love. And she's finding it hard to accept it because she grew up in a very tough situation. Um, very tough. Her mother died. Um, I think her father... Her mother was basically messing with a married man and her family disowned her so the mother ended up dying and she was raised by a um a guy that her mother stayed with i guess not it, it's hard to explain the guy was kind of like a homeless guy and he raised her but he thought he was doing something good and getting her a home to stay but it turns out that that home wasn't really a home it was a brothel and it's it, you guys it, it talks about trust and love and self-worth and just understanding who you are as a daughter of christ and i love this book so much it made me cry so i know rereading this with a physical form and marking it up i'm going to cry tears um i'm not sure if this one had scripture yes this one also does the same thing with the scriptures at the beginning of each chapter so this is set in the 1850s so it's definitely um a western not a western but it's 1850s and um california gold country yeah so kind of like a western style version of this book okay so the next four books are books that i have yet to read i'm planning to read one of these books this month and another one i read the first chapter of luckily so the first book i have here is falling for you from becky wade it's the first book in the bradford sisters romance and this is a christian contemporary romance novel this is kind of like a second chance romance it's basically um what's her name her name is willow bradford and her ex 
ex-boyfriend who is the former NFL quarterback named Corbin Stewart and them just rekindling their love basically it sounds good i do enjoy good contemporary romances especially second chance romances i like when people start off together break up and then get back together so i'm excited to see how this goes especially as a christian romance the next book i have is another one from tessa afshar and this one is thief of corinth i did receive this for review from tyndall and um all that i know is that this talks about paul the apostle and his time in corinth that's all that i know um it says on the back First century Corinth is a city teeming with com commerce and charm. It is also filled with danger and corruption, the perfect setting for Aridin's greatest adventure. I think that's her name. Um, and then it talks about how she befriends a Jewish rabbi named Paul and how they realize that his radical message challenges everything they fought to build and offers nothing, I'm sorry, offers something neither dared hope for so i don't know much about it i don't like to read the back of these books a lot just because i want to go into it blind um when it comes to like my fictional reads i like to read the back to be prepared but i find that with my christian novels i prefer to not know much about it just the basis of what it's based off of and i know that this includes paul and i mean who doesn't love the apostle paul so I can't wait to dive into this. The next two books are from the same author and I was sent one for review and then requested another one because I really wanted to read the first book and they're both by Connie Lynn Cassette. So we have A Light on the Hills which is the first book in the Cities of Refuge trilogy. I can't wait to read this. I already have my bookmark and stuff inside. I just I can't wait to dive into this. But basically this is a story of Mariah and um, how she has the mark of the Canaanite gods and her remembering her time as a captive in Jericho. That's all I know about it, and that's really all that I want to know about it. This cover is gorgeous, you guys. All of the covers for this book, this trilogy, sorry, is, like, gorgeous. And the third book cover, stunning. I'm actually going to show you once I show you that second one. But um, that's all that I know about this. I don't know much, and I want to keep it that way. There are scriptures included, again, um, at the beginning of each chapter. No? Maybe not. Maybe I was just seeing things. So, no. There are no... Um, scriptures included in this that i can see of but i think they're like intertwined as you read them so this is probably one of those books where you need to have your bible out or just take note of what you're reading so the second one is called shelter of the most high which i did haul already and this is the second book in the trilogy of which is the cities of refuge and this one follows um the pagan high priest's daughter sophia and a guy named etienne in kadesh and pretty much that's all that i know um i did read the first chapter with the author because during the pre pre-release pre i think it was pre-release or either the release day she had um some videos on youtube where she read the first chapter in three parts and i listened to her read it and i fell in love you guys it starts off with some gruesome stuff um with kidnapping and killing which was typical at that time um i guess you could say but yeah it's just about the promised land and i can't wait to dive into this book and the third book I can't remember the title, but I'll put the cover here um, so you guys can see it. But that is the cover. That is the third book. That comes out July 2019, and I cannot wait to get it because the story itself sounds so good. And it really is based off of the um, old laws of how the brother must marry the wife. How one brother must marry the wife of the other brother if that brother dies. It talks about that. But in this case, um, I believe the main character, she actually had feelings for the brother that she now has to marry, but ended up marrying the other brother, and she doesn't want to because she feels like the brother that she fell in love with that she's supposed to now marry hurt her. If that made any sense, um, I'm terrible at explaining these books, but yeah. So I am so excited for the Christian fictions that I have. I do have a ton more on my nook like a ton more um that are biblical and some that are romance wise i am loving this genre i'm more so loving the historical biblical fictions which are kind of like the fictions fictional stories that are based off of actual things in the bible those tend to interest me so much more because it really brings to life the stories and all the things that i'm learning within the bible and putting them into I guess real life view for me um so yeah that is it for this video i just wanted to talk about some of my favorites and then show you guys some other ones i'm going to have a more in-depth video where i'm reviewing each book because i do want to read a lot more because i'm definitely going to be doing my top 10 christian fictions and there's only like a month and a half left so maybe i need to hop on that because i only read like 
fix Christian fiction so far. So yeah. But if you guys have any questions, let me know and I'll get back to you in the next video. Bye. Mm -hmm.